But today we celebrate you because of the fact that uh, the word of the Lord is very clear in our lives and it gives us a road, pa- a road map for success. And one of the things that is given to us as individuals, and it's for every one of us in this room, it says to honor father and mother. It is the first commandment with promise. And we find that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 2. And it goes on from there. And we know that there is long life that is given and uh, for those that honor their fathers and their mothers. And today I'm so grateful uh, that we do have people in this room today that understands the importance of honoring. And uh, for those of you that have your mothers with you, uh, do whatever you got to do today to go spend time with them and hug their neck and give them the love that they deserve. And for those that us do, do not have our mothers uh, uh, today, we know this, that uh, those are one of the key ingredients that's going to make heaven just that much sweeter. And uh, we're so grateful uh, for the hope that we have. Amen. We're not here without hope today. And, uh, but today we honor you and uh, we, we celebrate you this morning. Uh, I'm not going to take any more time today. I am just honored to be able to be in the house of the Lord and to worship the Lord this morning as well as to invite to this platform today uh, my son, Austin, today. Would you come and just bring forth the word? Can you make him welcome today? Those of you going to class, feel free to do so at this time. Thank you. Bless you, man. Bless you. Amen. How many thankful to be in the house of the Lord this morning? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I'm thankful, honored to be here, honored to bring forth the word that God has given me one more time, and honored to have all the mothers in the house, honored to have my mother in the house. She's always been there in my corner for me, always pushing me, and honored to have my wife in here, the mother of our children, and I honor her, and I celebrate them both today, and I'm thankful for both of you guys. Would you give both of them a hand, please? I'm partial, but I'm I'm partial, but I think they're the two best in the house. (laughs) But if you would turn with me in your Bibles, I'm not going to delay any longer to uh, Mark chapter 5, (coughs) excuse me, we're going to read verses 1 through 5, they've sang and exhorted all over my notes this morning, so I believe that God is going to do something great in this house this morning, starting with verse number 1. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Praise God. With the help of the Lord this morning, I want to preach, it, preach the message the Lord gave me titled, Hope. Just simply, hope this morning. Pray with me if you would. Father, we thank you for your wonderful spirit and presence in the house this morning. We thank you, Father, that most of all, you're in this house. We thank, we're thankful for each and every heart and life that's here with us this morning. But most of all, we're thankful that, you're thankful that you are here with us, God. We thank you, Father, for everything you've already done in this worship service already. And we thank you for everything you're going to do in the remainder of this service this morning. And we thank you, Father, that even when it seems hopeless and even when it seems that all hope is lost, no matter what, you are still our hope this morning. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you. You may be seated this morning. The definition of hope is the expectation or desire for a certain thing to happen. Now, while hope is, it's not an emotion, but it's a way of thinking or a state of being, but it is still one of the strongest ways of thinking and one of the most powerful outlooks that there is. 
Now, studying hope, according to psychology today, a number of years ago, a, 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 <clears throat> a doctor named Nicholas Kristof, he described a randomized study involving 21,000 people across six countries that took place for over three years. Now, what they found was that they would study these people and they would find people that were trapped in a cycle of poverty and despair and who were, and, and they found that it affected their self esteem and their attitudes and the feeling of hopeless and depression, believing that nothing that they could do in themselves would ever change because of their course of life. But the, most, but the powerful part of this study is that after a certain amount of time, they would give these 21,000 people certain gifts, whether it was a, a goat for milk or for meat or bees for honey or things of that nature. They noticed a shift and a change in the attitudes of all of the people as they would receive these gifts. They experienced boosts in their self-esteem and their, their attitudes changed and their drive increased after the study was was over to the point that they stayed in that mindset of hope even after the study was finished. Just something as small as what they received took them out of a sense of hopelessness and out of a sense of despair and put a drive in them that it doesn't have to always be this way and it's not always going to be this way for me. Now I, I, I came into this life and I was living this time w without hope and with all hope lost but they, there was something that was given to me that drove me. Something that happened in my life that gave me a new sense of hope. Hope is a powerful thing. There is an oncologist named Jerome Groupman. He cites studies and research, researches where a patient with a belief and an expectation can block pain by releasing endorphins and enkelphins in, in their brain and blocking the pain from their body. Just from having an expectation and just from having a small sense of hope. But as powerful as... As hope can be, I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't wanna burst your bubble this morning with this next statement, but I promise I'm going somewhere. But as powerful as hope can be by itself to a person, hallelujah, as powerful as hope can be by itself to a person, we still find so many people in this world in a state of despair and hopelessness stuck in a cycle of up and down and this and that way and depressed and not depressed and, and in despair and then happy and joyful according to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention in 2020 in the United States alone there were nearly 46,000 suicides that took place Hallelujah. With an estimated of 1.2 million suicide attempts all within 2020 alone. Why is that? Why if according to secular studies stating that hope is so powerful that it can even cause the brain to block out pain. Friend, I'm going to tell you this morning because no matter how powerful a hopeful attitude may change your outlook on your life and on your situation. No matter how powerful it may be, hope by itself cannot rectify or get you out of the mess that you're in. But Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, can all by himself. He is your only hope this morning. Hallelujah. We aren't told in Scripture. We are not told in Scripture of how this man in Mark chapter 5 ended up in the situation and in the state he was in, in the tombs, crying and cutting himself, isolated from everyone else. We're not told of how he ended up there. But I personally believe that that is a very important fact that we cannot overlook because what that tells us is it does not matter what you came in dealing with this morning. It did not matter while that man ended up in the tombs. It does 
does not matter how you may have ended up in the mess that you're in. It is still not too powerful. It is still not too dirty that Jesus Christ cannot get you out of where you're at. He got the man out of the tombs. It didn't matter how he got there, but Jesus said, I got to get to the other side. Somebody needs my help. Somebody's feeling hopeless, and I just believe this morning he showed up in this house because there's a bunch of hopeless people that said, I don't know how I got here, but Jesus said, it don't matter. I'm here to get you out. (laughs) Hallelujah. He's still able to rescue you this morning. If you want to be rescued, hallelujah. This man, I believe he would, we we read in scripture, he displayed certain levels and inklings of hope within himself and in the natural by continuing to try and confine and treat himself by the efforts of man only to find out, only to find that each would end up as another failed attempt by man's hands. They tried with chains and the spirits would manifest and over take him and break the chains that they tried to confine and restrain him with and what what do you do when one thing does not work you try another thing with another extra trying to up the hope within you and 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 <coughs> excuse me well say it with a mindset of well that didn't work but i'm going to try this and this should work because it's a little bit stronger it's a little bit more effective in the eyes of man Hallelujah. But they put him in iron fetters and the demonic spirits would overtake him and he would break loose from the fetters. And we are told how many times he would break free from the chains and fetters. But we can speculate that it was multiple times because the Bible tells us that no man could bind him. Nobody could tame him. And you cannot say nobody if you don't try multiple time after time. And multiple people saying, I'm a little bit stronger than that last person. I'll, I'll try and cinch him a little bit tighter. I'm, I'm, I, this, this medicine is a little bit stronger than the last one. Maybe you should try and up that. Or maybe, maybe you try a few more drinks. Or maybe you try a few more drugs. Friend, your hope is not in a pill. It's not in a bottle it's not in a drug it's not in a man or a woman or a friend group your hope this morning is in one man the savior of the world the son of the living god jesus christ of nazareth (coughs) hallelujah can you imagine what his mindset was like Every single time he would come back to himself and find that it didn't work again. Coming back in the spirits, beginning to rest and beginning to go at ease. And he looks and he's, he's, he's broken out of the chains again. He's broken out of the fetters again. I'm not asking you to raise your hand or anything this morning, but how many in this house, you try and you try and you try and you try by the ways of man, by your own reasoning and your own understanding, I'll have a better, I'll have a more hopeful attitude this time. I'll try something stronger. I'll try something different. I'll try again and again and again. Only to find yourself in the same state or even worse off. Now, what that tells us is that no amount of human psychology and no amount of reasoning by man is any match for the powers of sin and darkness in this world. Now, don't mistake me on this. I am a believer in faith-based Christian counseling. I am. I don't believe that God would gift men and women with the knowledge of the human brain like he has for us as the, the body of believers to not take advantage of. But it's not counseling and hope and reasoning all by itself. The foundation of 
regular human psychology is the ways of this world and by and medicine and, and the pharmaceutical side of it. But the foundation of faith-based Christian counseling is still the power of Jesus Christ. It is still the foundation of, yes, I will factor in a few different things and, and different ways of the brain. But at the same time, they tell you your hope is still Jesus Christ. Because sin and darkness, <coughs> excuse me, sin and darkness will only yield to the power and the authority of Christ. And when he is not involved when trying to address the darkness in your life, I don't care how hopeful or optimistic you or anybody else might be, it will fail. You cannot fight the world with the world's standards. You cannot combat the world with the things of this world. You cannot. Jesus said that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. The devil is not going to fight his own antics. The devil is not going to fight against and win against his own demonic spirits. His own demonic spirits that he has sent out. But the only one to combat any demonic stronghold and any demonic darkness and sin in your life is Jesus the light of the world and the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may try things and they may work for a minute because I'm sure this man did not break out of the chains and fetters immediately. And I'm sure that everybody thought after, uh, after a moments would go by of him still being bound, I'm sure they probably thought that, hey, maybe it had finally worked this time. But when the powers that, control, that controlled him manifested and they did not see a stronger force than them trying to help him, they continued to rule and control this man and his life and they would get stronger. Hallelujah. But I have good news for you. I've doom and gloomed you long enough, I think. But I have good news for you. No matter how many legions of demons were in this man, they were still no match for the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I have even better news for you this morning. No matter what you're facing or fighting in your life today, it is no match for the Savior of the world that is in here this morning and is ready and willing to set you free just like that man in Mark chapter 5 this morning. <coughs> listen in verses number 6 through 12 we read and we see that no matter how many or what the unclean spirits may be they must bow into the authority and submit themselves to Christ hallelujah this man came out of the tombs as soon as Jesus set foot on the shore and the legion spoke out of that man and acknowledged Christ as the son of the most high God because pastor Jade already said it Philippians 2 through 9 tells us wherefore God has so also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is a above every other name hallelujah that at the name of Jesus oh come on in here this morning hallelujah at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord hallelujah to the glory of God the Father Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things in this passage can also be translated as those. That tells us that at the name of Jesus, angels in heaven, being the those above the earth, all of mankind and even spirits of darkness in the earth, being the things in this earth, and and every spirit of hell being the things under the earth have no other choice than to bow the knee and proclaim and acknowledge him as Lord at the mention of his name. Hallelujah. Lord is defined as one who has 
power and authority. But the only difference is, is that Jesus tells us in Matthew 28 and 18, all power and authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He is Lord over all with all power and all authority. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you may have came in here battling with today, it has to bow and acknowledge him as the Lord of glory who has all power and all authority. Hallelujah. (coughs) He is the one who holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. The one who was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life for 33 years, was beaten and battered and bruised with 39 lashes for all of our iniquities. Hallelujah. Nailed to an old rugged cross and died for our sins. Was buried for three days but resurrected and is alive forevermore and seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and for me this morning. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise in here. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not here this morning to offer you any kind of secular hope or any kind of self-help program this morning. But I'm here to offer you the only hope that you have of seeing any significant change in your life and a change in your eternal destination. And that hope is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can you know that, Austin? How could you possibly know that? He did it for me. He did it for me. He did it for Pastor Jade. He did it for my wife. He did it for my parents. He did it for Pastor Ron and Pastor Debbie. Hopeless situations. Hopeless cases. But in the end, here we stand before you saying we were in despair. We were hopeless. But now we have hope. We have hope. It may not always be easy. It may not always be the best circumstances. But in the end, we can look at every single day and every single step we take and every single situation that may come up come into our lives and say, yeah, it may not look great right now, but Jesus is still our hope. And if he got us here... He going to get us through to the other side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I about to take a run and fit in this house. We get you you may face a situation in your life as a believer, but you ain't facing it alone. You can get to it and say, "He got me here. He's going to get me through it. He got me here. I'm going to make it to the other side because he'll never ever leave you without hope because he is hope. Excuse me. Hallelujah. Many instances, just like this man we read in our text today, many instances where Christ encountered people, the Bible tells us but that before they encountered him, that they exercised different things that they were trying to fix it on their own. As I said, our man in the text today, chains and fetters they used to try and restrain him, but he could not be tamed. The woman with the issue of blood a little bit later on in our text, the Bible says that she spent all the money that she had on doctors, and some believe even experimental treatments. But the Bible tells us that after all of that, her condition still grew worse. It still got worse. She said, I tried this and it didn't work. I tried that. It didn't work. I tried that. It didn't get work. All it kept just kept getting worse. You know, I already said I'm not against doctors this morning. I'm not. I promise you I'm not. But why is it that we try everything else except for Jesus first? Why is it that every time something happens, we immediately run to something else? When Jesus is standing here saying, 
Try me. Try me. Everything that I gave you in this word tells you that I can fix what you're going through. There's not a situation that we're dealing with in this world that has not already been dealt with and not already been conquered by the cross at Calvary. It's not a pill. It's not a drug. It's not a psychic. It's nothing like that. But it's a man named Jesus. It's a cross on a hill called Calvary. It's a spotless lamb who shed and shed his blood and died and is making intercession for you and I this morning. Hallelujah. Knocking stuff down all over again. Hallelujah. You can search. <coughs> you can search and search in all of the things that I just named and never ever find any hope in them whatsoever. All you'll find is that you will still feel like you have to continually look to find what it is that you're seeking for. But Jesus told the woman at the well, this water you drink, you'll get thirsty again. But the water that I have, you'll drink from, and it's living water, and you'll never thirst again. Not a physical thirst, but a spiritual thirst, a hunger inside of you that's, that's driving you saying, I got to find that next thing. I got to find that next thing. I got to find that next thing. But I can tell you, like I said earlier from experience, I looked in a whole lot of places. I looked in a whole lot of things. May not be where you looked and it may not be where you tried and went. But I can tell you, it was places that I went and things that I tried. And I was thirsty before it was all done and it's over with. But I can tell you, one night at an altar, when I was 14 years old, at a country church in Waynesville, Ohio, oh, I dipped down into that well of living water, and it's nearly 16 years later. I've never been thirsty since. <laughs> Hallelujah. You say, Austin, that's fine and dandy. That's, that's wonderful. I'm glad it worked for you. <coughs> I'm glad it worked for you. But you just don't know what I'm dealing with. You don't know what it is that I came in with this morning. No, friend, I don't. I don't know what it is you're dealing with. But listen, in the history of the world... There has never, ever been a problem or an issue that God could not solve. There has never been a sin too bad that Christ could not forgive. There's never been a demonic spirit too powerful for Christ. And there's never, ever been a sinner too far gone that he could not save. So... I don't mean to be rude and I don't mean to be brash. It don't matter what you came in with this morning. It don't matter where you were last night. It don't matter who you were with or what you were even doing last night. But you're here this morning. You're here this morning in the house of God. And there's a Savior that's saying, yeah, you came in feeling hopeless. You walked around last night, went to bed saying, is it going to get any better than this? Friend, I can tell you, it can get better than that. It can get better than what you're feeling this morning because Jesus can save you he can set you free and set you on a path to take you on to glory <clears throat> Luke chapter number 11 verses 21 and 22 I'm almost done Luke chapter 11 21 and 22 you don't have to turn there I'll read it real quick but you can turn there if you want the Bible says, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusteth, trusted and divideth the spoils. The strong man first described, excuse me. The strong man first described is Satan. 
Satan keeping his palace, being he's keeping his, he's keeping his possessions and his territories. He's got a tight grip on them. He's got them chained up and locked up. He's armed and he's fighting, trying to fight off everything that he can to keep a hold of those possessions and territories. Now those possessions and territories are not just, it's not just land and it's not just places. But those possessions and territories this morning, they include people and their eternal souls. Coming in this morning with Satan got a lock on you. Satan got a tight grip on you. Uh, he's, got you he's got you chained up this morning in despair and hopelessness and addiction and depression and oppression. Saying, I got you. I got you. Hallelujah. At one time, the strong man being Satan, he had control of death, hell, and the grave and led many people to their destruction without an opportunity for redemption and grace. Hallelujah. But verse 22 tells us of a stronger one than the strong man. A stronger one that came down from heaven and became God in flesh and overcame the strong man and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and now gives us all an opportunity of salvation and redemption. Hallelujah. It tells us that he took the strong man's armor away from him. He took the sting of, from death and he took the victory away from the grave and he divided the spoils being he led captivity captive made an open show of Satan on a hill called Calvary and multiplied millions can now experience salvation and be saved this morning. <coughs> Hallelujah. This, isn't, this passage isn't just for that one instance in history called Calvary. And it is not only a past event, but it is something that can happen for you today, this morning, friend. Whatever strong man in your life may have you captive, there is a stronger one in this house, being Jesus Christ, that I've already said is ready and willing and has already overcome whatever stronghold is in your life. He stripped the enemy of his power power and he did it all at the cross called Calvary and when you come to him this morning he will divide the enemy's spoils back to you now what does that mean? I'm almost done, I promise. What does that mean, Austin? That means that when you come to Jesus, He will give you your joy back. Hallelujah. He will give you your peace back, your hope back, your freedom, your liberty. Hallelujah. Your, li your healing, your breakthrough through, and all that the enemy has stolen from you. He will give you back life for death and destruction. <coughs> Hallelujah. We were not created to be the enemy's palace in this scripture. We were not created to be held captive by the enemy. We were created in the image of God and to be his temple and to be carriers of his spirit and his glory. Hallelujah. Our hearts were created for the habitation of Christ. And is that, if that is the case, that means that we're his this morning. We're his this morning. There are some of you in this house that walked in and the enemy is telling you and he has you convinced that you belong to him and he has you that it's hopeless for you to try to be that it's hopeless for you to even try because you belong to him that it's that it's a wrap for you that it's over he told you this morning i don't even know why you're going i know it's mother's day but why are you even going all that all that jesus nonsense that can't help you friend it's the only thing that can help you. It's the only thing that can help you this morning. Hallelujah. <clears throat> You're his this morning. Now you may not be serving him, but as his creation, you are his. Now that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that you can continue to not serve him. 
and die lost and that you'll make it to heaven because, friend, I'm sorry to tell you, against popular culture and modern preaching today, against, against all of that, if you die lost without Jesus, I'm sorry, but you're going to a devil's hell. I don't mean to be blunt, and, and, but I'm just telling you, Modern preaching this morning, modern preaching, and a lot of pulpits, unfortunately, this morning say, live how you want, you're his, you're fine, you'll go to heaven. No, friend, if you die without him, you will spend an eternity without him. You will spend eternity without him. Hallelujah. But what that means this morning, being his, what it means is that when you come to him this morning, he will look at Satan and whatever demonic strongholds may have, you, may have you today and say, hey, turn them loose. They're mine. Hey, turn them loose. That one's mine. Hey, addiction, get, rid, get off of him. He's mine. Hey, depression, get off of her. He's, she's mine. Turn them loose, these mine friend this morning. You can come to him and he will look the devil flat-footed right in the eye and say, I'm the stronger one that you've been looking for. You want a peace? You come on and you come get some devil because I already overcame you 2,000 years ago at a cross called Calvary. Now you turn my child loose. <laughs> Hallelujah. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said, you're mine. Hallelujah. The enemy thought he had you this morning, but Jesus is saying, you're mine. You may not be serving me right now, but you're mine. Hallelujah. I'm done. Worship team, come and help me. Stand with me if you would. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We could go around this house this morning. And hear countless, countless testimonies. Of somebody saying all hope was lost. I was hopeless. I was desperate. I didn't think... I didn't think anything would work. But one day at an altar, hallelujah, when I thought that the enemy had me and that it was over with, I heard Jesus whisper in my ear, you're mine. You're mine. Hallelujah. My dad's in the house this morning. You listen to his testimony, hear him give it. Bound by alcohol for a long time. Nearly died in a motorcycle wreck. Could have died in a motorcycle wreck. Hallelujah. But the Savior of the world said he's mine. You talk to my dad, he'll say, I didn't quit drinking. I was delivered. He said, I didn't quit drinking. I was delivered. I couldn't quit on my own. But the Son of the Most High God came to me, looked that alcoholic devil in the eye and said, you turn him loose. He's mine. Justin, you know that's right. Just in the same way, I couldn't quit it. I couldn't quit it on my own. But the Savior of the world said, He's mine. You turn him loose. He's mine. Hallelujah. Brother Austin, I don't know. I know I don't know you that well. The Savior of the world. That thing that almost took you out and destroyed you and almost sent you into eternity. Jesus said, Not yet. 
I heard the Lord say a few days ago, I'm not done with him yet. I'm still working on him. You just keep going because he's not done with you yet. Hallelujah. But he looked, he stopped you. He stayed the hand of the enemy and said, that thing is trying to take him out. But I got a calling and a purpose and a plan and I'm not done with him yet. Death, you got, you stay your hand. He's mine. I'm about to have a run and fit in here, y'all. Why don't you worship him a little bit more? Why don't you lift your hands in this house? I dare somebody take a run in here this morning. I dare somebody take a walk in here this morning. The enemy thought he had you, but Jesus said, Woo! Jesus said, you're mine. you up but come on just think about it for a moment the brink of death the brink of destruction but Jesus said you're mine brother Randy this morning a broken back couldn't work fallen all that should have took him out and killed him but Jesus said no he's mine he's mine sister Sarah come here a minute I've heard her testify this one's for the believers in the house I've heard her testify saying Randy's laid up couldn't work we didn't know how it was going to happen the bills didn't stop coming in the mouse didn't stop getting hungry she said we i've heard her testify and say we didn't know how it was going to come in but the bills got paid there was food in the cabinets my babies never went hungry we may not have had what we wanted but we never went without because jesus said She's mine, they're mine, I'll take care of them. <laughs> Maddie here. Maddie here. Tormented in her mind. The enemy coming after her saying I got her I got her I got her I'm gonna get her so bound up with anxiety and worry get her so bound up worrying but Jesus said turn her loose turn her loose she mine turn her loose she's mine not only am I setting her mind free but I'm already healing her body as well that bothered her and the enemy caused her so much worry it's gone in the name of Jesus it's healed in Jesus name because Jesus said she's mine I'll take care of her hallelujah hallelujah your hands in here this morning Elijah come here buddy Hallelujah. You've heard this young man's grandmother testify of the vision that she saw the world coming after him. Things that he never struggled with going to come and try and bind him up. Say, I'm going to snuff him out before he can really step into 
what God really has for him. Saying, I'm going to get him so bound up before he can really walk in that calling, walk in that anointing. I'm going to take him out before he has any chance to make an impact. But here he is this morning. Here he is this morning. Why? Because in the attacks and in the temptations, Jesus stepped on the scene and said, He's mine. Jesus said, he's mine. He's got a support system behind him that's praying for him, that's pushing him, that's working with him, saying the attacks and the temptations of this world may be strong, but the stronger one is saying, you'll not have him. He's mine. Hallelujah. from making an impact trying to keep you hallelujah why because the stronger ones in the house you may think those things that are bothering you and trying to torment you and keep a hold on you are strong but you know the power you know the authority. You've walked in it. You've experienced it. It's not the will of God for you to not go another to, to not go another day walking in freedom and liberty. Hallelujah. The stronger one is in the house today. The stronger one is breaking the chains. The stronger one is breaking the temptations. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. anybody hallelujah but there for a while it was just you coming wasn't it there for a little bit but I want you to look back there your whole family's here this morning your whole family's here this morning sweetheart hallelujah why Jesus said I'm gonna save her the things that bugged and had a hold on her family's not going to hold her. She's mine, but I'm also going to use her to bring her whole family here. I'm going to use her to bring her whole family here. Come on up here, guys. Come on up here. I'm going to use her.
to get her whole family saved and in the house of God and serving Him. Oh, mama, ha, sata, mama, ha, ya. Hallelujah. Brother Mark, Sister Marcella, the enemy told you it was over with, didn't he? It was done. No hope. Hopeless. But here they are still serving him still faithful to the house of God because Jesus said when it seems hopeless they're still mine I'll still take care of them hallelujah bow your heads with me across this house I'm done I gave you you've seen you've heard me <coughs> give these testimonies What did the enemy tell you before you walked in this house today? Did he tell you all hope was lost? Did he tell you you may not even, you might as well not even try? Why are you even here? Why are you going? I got you. I'm here to tell you, Jesus is telling you this morning, you're mine. You are mine. Hallelujah. stronger one is ready to break the hold of the strong man in your life. Hallelujah. Keep your heads bowed. If you're in this house this morning and you're not in relationship with Jesus Christ, I, I promise you I would not embarrass you for anything in this world. No amount of money could make me ever embarrass you. No amount of clout or hype would ever make me want to embarrass you. But there is a heavy burden and an anointing in my heart to not let you leave here this morning without giving you an opportunity to meet Jesus at this altar and say, I need help. I'm hopeless, but I know that you can bring me hope. I'm desperate. I'm in despair, but I know you can get me out of where I'm at. I'm bound up, but I know you can set me free this morning, Jesus. That man in the tombs, it says that he ran. Now, there's no way. They say that there's no way that he could have known who Jesus really was at the time. But I believe that there was a shift and a presence that was tangible when Jesus set foot on the shore that stirred that man in his heart and said, I don't know who that man is, but I believe that he can get me out of here. I believe that he can help me. And I believe that there's several in this house this morning. You may not understand all of this. You may not understand what's going on, or you may not understand why a nearly 30-year-old bearded, heavy-set guy has been standing up here screaming at you for the last 40 minutes or so. But I'm here to tell you it's because the stronger one's in the house to help you. If that's you in this house this morning, and you say, Austin, I want to get saved. I want to get set free this morning. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand. Hallelujah. Thank you for that hand. Hallelujah. We got one hand. Is there anybody else this morning? Is there anyone else this morning? Hallelujah. We got one hand. Okay. If you're a believer in this house this morning and you say, Austin, I'm in commitment, I'm in covenant and relationship with Christ, but I got some strongholds. And I need to have a time, have time with the stronger one and get set free. If that's you this morning, I want you to lift your hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for those hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, you can look up. Thank you. your hand this morning or you should have I want you to come I want you to come this morning grab the hand I want you to grab the hand of the person next to you and say I need to go to the altar and pray
Or if you're standing next to a person and you're a believer and you did not raise your hand, I want you to look at the person next to you and say, do you need me to go pray with you? Hallelujah. If you lifted your hand or you should have, come. This altar is open. And each one that comes and answers this altar call, I want you spirit-filled believers to file in behind them and help pray for them. Hallelujah. The stronger ones in the house this morning, you're not going to leave the same way that you came in. Hallelujah. This altar Pastor Jade open. here, I just want to thank you for watching the service with us today and being a part of it. We ask that you stay in touch with us, follow us on all of our social media platforms, and we'll see you again soon. We love you, so does God.